Welcome back to the final portion of the synthesis of copper oxide from copper sulfate pentahydrate. In the last videos, we went ahead and we isolated the solid copper hydroxide. And this is what it looks like. It was an arduous task to remove from this bottle here. I did that by scraping it out and then I used some water to rinse it all. One good question is, if I did not do that, would the numbers work out all right? In other words, something else existed in that aqueous layer before. And so that's a, a, something to think about as far as a source of error. However, I rinsed it thoroughly and then um, removed as much of the liquid as I could. So primarily what I have here is copper hydroxide. It's a little wet, but most of the aqueous portion that existed before is gone. So if there were any salts in there that, that were in the solution that I decanted away, they should not be present in this. So now the final step is to heat this over a flame and it should react. As you can see, it's bluish now, a little bit of a, a dark blue. And I'm gonna heat it over a flame and we'll get a chemical reaction to finally yield our copper oxide. This um, crucible here, nice little handle, I've already recorded the mass, and in the simulation, the goal was to do this in a test tube. In practice, the test tube uh, isn't very practical, and um, I found it better to use this crucible. So, in lieu of the test tube, we do have a crucible. So, I'm going to go ahead and light the flame. Just right. And so we can kind of let the fireworks begin. So this is going to go ahead and proceed as it is, and I'm going to not have the flame too high, but it's going to essentially completely convert this copper hydroxide into copper oxide. And just to save a little bit of time, I'm gonna stop the flame and I'm gonna show you I already did one and this is what it looks like. So as you can see, we've got our nice dry copper oxide and we've got from before the mass of this crucible and we've got the gross weight of the crucible plus the copper oxide take the difference that's the mass of the copper oxide and you can go ahead and work through the laboratory to get your empirical formula but this is what the product looks like at the end it looks like just like the stuff that you received at the end of part one or experiment one where you took copper overheat to obtain copper oxide 
here we did it in a multi-step synthesis fashion where we went from copper um, sulfate pentahydrate via base to um, a, a copper hydroxide uh, filter decanted or otherwise I centrifuged it took away the mother liquor that's going to have some other salts in it I've got the copper hydroxide isolated we just heated that up and now I've got copper oxide and there you go that concludes the second portion of the lab for empirical formula and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you guys during the lab sessions thank you Bye-bye.